Hey guys, today we'll be taking a look at the Marvel Legends Iron Man animated series or Iron Man Retro Wave She-Hulk. And this is one of my most anticipated figures of all time. I'm just, I'm sure just like every other collector, but yeah, we have the uh, Marvel Legends She-Hulk. I found this figure at a Target, surprisingly, because I, I went into the toy aisle and they had the whole Iron Man wave lined up, but She-Hulk. And I was a little bit bummed out because I thought someone just, you know, somebody got She-Hulk and they just left the rest of the Iron Man wave. But when I went to the NECA section, she was misplaced over there. So I guess someone picked it up, second guessed, or didn't want it anymore and they just put it over there. So there you go. I had this figure on pre-order on Amazon a few months ago or a couple months ago and it still hasn't shipped yet. And I just decided to stroll at Target one day on a Sunday and she's here. And that's really cool. So as you guys can see, I apologize that the packaging is not in the frame because the packaging is really big and huge. But yeah, we'll just take a look at the figure through the packaging first before into the actual review. And yeah, I think it's uh, pretty cool. And it's weird to me that she never appeared in Iron Man the Animated Series. So I find it questionable why they decided to pack her in this, you know, card back because I have the show on DVD and it's on Disney Plus. And the only time I remember her appearing in other Marvel shows, obviously she appeared in The Incredible Hulk, 90s cartoon, but she also appeared in a couple episodes in The Fantastic Four. So that's kind of strange. And this look for She-Hulk is more based on the John Byrne run of She-Hulk, especially with the poofy hair. She looks nothing like her animated counterpart, but that's okay because the John Byrne run of She-Hulk is my favorite She-Hulk. That's what I think of when it comes to She-Hulk. I know people wanted the Dan Slott She-Hulk because it's more of the iconic design, especially in the 2000s, but I'm happy with this one. And as you guys can see, you got the typical Iron Man artwork right here, the 90s Iron Man, uh, She-Hulk, Iron Man, purple packaging, and then the back is really bland. Uh, she comes with swappable hands and she has a little bio right here. So if you guys wanna read that, you guys can and the Iron Man logo, and that's it. And once again, I already have a criticism with this figure. $24.99, I'm always gonna criticize the price that Hasbro gives us, okay? Especially for what little we get. And you guys can see this really big gap right here, this empty space. This should have been placed for a uh, alternate head sculpt, maybe like a more angry or just a serious stern one. And I'm glad they gave her a smiling face because that was one of the issues I had with the MCU She-Hulk Marvel Legends is that they did not give her any more accessories because She-Hulk is a very expressive figure or a character and or emotive character. So I feel like an extra head would have gone a long way and it would have been reflective of the $24.99 price tag. But yeah, that's just me. Let's get started into the review. As you guys can see out of the package, she looks amazing. She looks sensational. And I know down the road, I am positive that Hasbro will give us a repaint of this figure in her Fantastic Four uniform, whether they're gonna give her a different head sculpt or maybe just use this exact same figure but just repainted everything into a Fantastic Four uniform. Either way, I'm gonna get it. It, it will be another ideal She-Hulk to have for me, another John Byrne, you know, She-Hulk, so. I'm happy about that. And she only comes with a couple accessories. You know, you, you have a couple fists and a broken rifle where she can put in her hands, which I'll, I'll re hopefully I remember to showcase that later. But we're going to start off with uh, comparisons. So with other figures, um, the only other Iron Man figure I have is the modular Iron Man, the first one that they did. I know they made a animated series accurate Iron Man, but the red and yellow doesn't really do it for me. It kind of does, but it kind of doesn't at the same time. So I think the red and gold one looks good. Uh, I also have the X-Men 97 Wolverine right here. So looking good, looking good. I do have another 90s uh, Marvel figure. I have this Marvel Legends uh, Cyclops. He's on the base right now, obviously, but still she towers over everyone. And the last one I have is the Marvel Legends Peter B. Parker. 
uh, obviously with like soft goods that I got from eBay. So this is the Marvel Legends Peter B. Parker and his feet came from the other Peter B. Parker from the Across the Spider-Verse wave. This is the Into the Spider-Verse version, but yeah. So there you go. There's the size comparison. Uh, looks great. I was planning on just getting like five figures to represent their teams. So for example, even though this guy isn't from the 90s, Hasbro has yet to give us an, a proper 90s Spider-Man. I really did not like the Walmart exclusive cell shaded one. That one was awful. I also hate my Spider-Man figures to be a naked body with, you know, painted on webs. But I'm rambling. I'm going off tangent. So, but my point is this will just be a, a placeholder Spider-Man. So there's that. And you have Iron Man who represents the Avengers. So Wolverine who re represents the X-Men. I do need to get a Fantastic Four character. I was thinking about getting the thing or just wait until Hasbro gives us a, a She-Hulk in her Fantastic Four uniform and that will be good enough for me. But yeah. And I'll do a couple more comparisons. Here's the DC Multiverse Jim Lee Batman from McFarlane. Here's also the Jim Lee Superman from McFarlane. From both of these guys are from Batman Hush. So there you go. And they do have custom cloth capes that I bought from eBay as well. So there you go. Pretty freaking cool. So there is that. There's your comparison and yeah, let's just take a look, a good look at the figure. The head sculpt is gorgeous. I love this head sculpt a lot. Looks like she popped out of the comic books more than the cartoon, so yeah. And the hair is heavy. You guys, if, if you hold the figure, if you have this in person, you can feel the weight because of the hair or this head sculpt. So yeah, the colors pop. The colors are nicely, you know, applied for the most part. I know the little tank top thing right here. It's a little bit sloppy, but for the most part, it's fine. As you guys can see, and then right here, and in the back, and there you go. So let's try and attempt to have her uh, break the gun in half, which I'm pretty sure I'm gonna have to finesse this off camera because it's kind of hard to do it in the camera so I'll be right back. Here you guys go. This is a pretty much a half-assed attempt but you get the idea. So there you go. Her breaking the rifle and the rifle is really well detailed. So pretty cool. I'm not into guns. I don't know anything about guns so I don't know what kind of gun this is but pretty cool. So yeah you can emulate her breaking rifles as or guns like she did plenty of times in the comics. So yeah and let's just take this out let's just swap the hands which are easily swappable so that's cool and right here and i guess the elephant in the room will talk about her joint colors because that is like the biggest um point that people made out in the prototype pictures or when they showed it off at the convention or whatever so yeah the knee joints are a different color from the uh rest of the body which is not good and same could be said with the elbows and i've seen some of the defense saying that oh the reason why these knees are different colors to the you know the rest of the body is because uh these knee joints have a different plastic and it's supposed to be a stronger plastic so it doesn't break which to me hasbro has been prioritizing the wrong joints to make stronger in my opinion the joints that hasbro should be focusing on are ankle joints you guys have no idea how many times um collectors and had marvel legends where they snapped at the ankles and not only that the bicep hasbro should be prioritizing at the bicep too we've seen so many people uh had their marvel legends snap at the bicep and they had to use the screwdriver trick to um basically create a new joint replacer and make the joint work again so yeah i just i've never heard of any issues about double jointed knees and elbows breaking it's usually more on the um biceps and ankles so yeah that to me never makes sense i just think these yeah this doesn't look good 
these knees, but you know, whatever. Uh, articulation. So her head is a ball jointed head. Uh, not a lot of range because of her hair, but it works just as well. So yeah, there's no hinge or anything. So it's just like a ball, like a dumbbell, I think as you guys call it, or some collectors call it. Uh, shoulders go out like that. Bicep swivel, double jointed elbows, uh, wrist articulation with a hinge, uh, torso articulation, which is okay. Like, see, barely goes front, kind of goes more back than it does front. Uh, hips, does the splits, that's good. Goes up, not too bad. Double jointed knees, cool. And then the calf swivel right here, which is at the boot cut, which is awesome and ankle articulation with the pivot and the rocker and pretty much that's it and in my opinion she is the figure of the wave like the figure that's most demanding i don't want to say solid after i guess we'll just have to see once these figures actually release because my pre-order on amazon hasn't shipped yet so i have no idea when this particular figure is going to be released because apparently at the time of this recording, Amazon released every other Marvel Legends Iron Man figure in the wave. So, except this one. So, <laughs> I guess we'll just have to wait and see. But this is an amazing figure. I think for the most part, with its issues like the price, these discolored elbows and knees, I think it's a 10 out of 10. Other than the, you know, the, the criticisms I give. So for the most part realistically a 9 out of 10 but this is a great She-Hulk figure she would go great with your 90s Marvel collection and yeah so that's pretty much it I'll see you guys next time oh before I leave one more size comparison guys I don't know why uh I did not do this but here is her next to the uh Marvel Legends MCU She-Hulk and this was my favorite She-Hulk for the past couple of years you know she's very well articulated. She's great. I just wish um, she came with an extra head sculpt, you know, like a smiling one. But the likeness to Tatiana Mas Maslany is really good. It's really spot on. And this was one of my favorite for years, for a couple of years. So, yeah. Now I get to retire this one. And <laughs> um, she will be my new She-Hulk on display. And I hope Hasbro will give us the Fantastic Four uniform version sooner than later. And yeah, and I I'll just put my hot take out there. I did enjoy the She-Hulk um, series. It's not perfect, but I hope we get a second season just so she can go from this to this, you know, in terms of personality and even look if you really want to go that far. But yeah, so there you go, guys. That's it.